Okay. Okay, now it's good. Uh, shall I start? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Prano, and I'll be talking about uh, science and spirit. So I am part of this uh, Ascent group, uh, which uh, like most of you have heard about it already. Uh, it's a platform where we discuss science and uh, spirituality together. We share uh, common ideas in them and uh, discuss uh, things that are related to both so that we gain a very good understanding of how uh, this world works. So, yeah, so before I start, uh, today is 15th August and it's our Independence Day. So uh, I would like to uh, just say Happy Independence Day to everyone and, uh, uh, and think about and uh, uh, relive the uh, great, uh, uh, relive our great freedom fighters and the sacrifice that they did for our uh, country so that we have, we have independence today. Uh, before going to my main talk, uh, I also would like to uh, show you another talk that we had today morning, uh, earlier in the morning. So this is uh, Manya Ji's talk on uh, incredible Indian innovations. Uh, I would urge all of you uh, to go visit this uh, YouTube link and, uh, and uh, gain some very uh, good information on uh, some great Indian innovations that we have had before. Uh, by going through this, going through this uh, incredible talk. Okay, uh, so let's start. So, uh, what are some of the objectives that we are going to cover today? Uh, so, the first question that I'm going to address today is, uh, what is science? So, all of us have been studying science uh, right from our uh, first standard, I guess, and we have this all these different subjects. And then uh, somewhere around fourth or fifth standard, uh, it bifurcates. It becomes physics, chemistry, biology, there's mathematics. And then you go some more deep into it and then physics itself splits into many things. Chemistry itself starts splitting into many things. And you keep going deeper and deeper. So what is this uh, field of science that you have been studying right from our uh, first standard? So that is what I'll briefly talk about today. Then what are the principles that are going to be used in any field of science, be it physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, all of them have a common thread. All of them have a common way of understanding things. So what are the so-called scientific principles that are used in all of these fields uh, is what I'll be addressing next. So the third part is what is common in science and what is common in spirituality. So many people who go, who have a very strong background in science often don't understand or of, often don't agree upon what spiritual seekers, uh, is, is what spiritual seekers do. And people who are in the line of spirituality often don't agree with what science people say. So is there, so, what we, what we would like to explore is, is there some common things in the field of science and in the field of spirituality, which you can appreciate so that we can have a very good understanding of both science and spirituality. That is what I'll be addressing next. Okay, so once we are done with our objectives, I want to start with this uh, series of cartoons and I've named it, What is Not Science? So I just want to start off by telling, telling uh, you guys what is not science. So here uh, there's a kid, okay? So there's a kid and uh, he's studying something. So he has gone to a school. So he's reading a science textbook and he's, and he's reading something. So uh, what is he reading? So he's reading something called as Newton's, Newton's third law. I hope many people are very familiar with this. I just picked a very uh, simple uh, scientific concept. Uh, but for those people who just need a quick refreshing, it just says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever action you do, there is an equivalent and there is a reaction in the opposite direction. So that is what the kid is reading here. So he has gone to school 
and uh, he's reading about newton's third law okay so next what does the kid do he comes home and he starts memorizing it okay newton's third law what it says is every action has an equal and opposite reaction so why does the kid do this for the next step he wants to so the what the kid wants to do is he wants to get good marks in exam so what the kid has done here he has gone to school he's read about newton's third law then he has memorized it he's gone to the, he's he's gone to the exam hall later and he's got good marks but i want to say this is not science he's missing the science in all of this okay so all he has done is read about it memorized it and he has written the same thing again but this is not science actually so what exactly is science so okay we have another cartoon series here so there's a kid again so he has come across newton's third law so what does this kid do now so instead of going to the next step which is memorizing he asks okay how to understand this how do i understand this newton's third law how how does how is it applicable to me how does it work so these are the questions that come in this kid's mind so then what does the kid do he says okay fine i want to understand this so now let me do an experiment let me test this and let's see if whatever this newton guy said is right so what does he do so he conducts an experiment so what he holds a balloon so he fills some air in the balloon he holds the balloon okay and what he does next what what he does next is he releases the balloon so when he releases the balloon the balloon goes up and there is some air that is going that is being pushed down so the action is that the air is being pushed down and the reaction is the balloon has gone up so air is going down balloon is going up so every action where the air is going down has an equal and opposite reaction where the balloon is going up so now what the kid has done in these series of cartoons is he hasn't blindly taken what newton has told for granted and he hasn't blindly taken it and he hasn't learnt it for the sake of getting good marks in exam what he has done he has tried to understand it he has tried to understand what newton's third law is he is he has made his own versions of experiments he has made his own versions of understanding things and he is satisfied and he has said okay fine so now i know how much air is going down i know how the balloon is going up and the actions are equal and opposite and now he says i have understood newton's third law so this is science okay so understanding concepts trying to know how things work this is what is the science part in what uh, all our academics teach trying to know about things so like i said uh, science is all about seeking trying to understand getting very get, getting new perspectives in life so this is what science is about science is about seeking things so questions like why does this happen how does it happen when does it happen all these are questions all these are questions that is making this person that is making this kid think about things he's trying to understand he's trying to seek so i just want to say this uh, is you don't become a scientist by getting more and more degrees you become a scientist by asking these kind of questions in life and actively trying to pursue it actively trying to understand how things happen so everyone is actually a scientist you don't need phd degrees to become a scientist if you are dedicated in asking these questions if you are passionate enough to know how things work to know how uh, to to know why things work in some way to know how things work in some way to know when when does it work and when does it not work asking these questions and trying to get answers for these questions is what makes you a scientist okay so now now i just want to uh, show you some uh, pictures of uh, great scientists so i am pretty sure you heard of these people uh, there's albert einstein there's isaac newton and 
we have had we have had um, we have produced some great indian scientists as well there's aryabhatta there's ramanujam and uh, if you go to if you go and listen to today's talk earlier by manya ji uh, she has uh, she has told a great deal about aryabhatta and uh, his great discovery so yeah so these are some of the great scientists that we have so what made them great why are these scientists great they all they also ask questions they have also tried to understand so what makes them great okay so i just want to show you a series of pictures and try to illustrate uh, how and what sets them apart what makes what makes them great okay so okay so this is a person so what uh, this person is resting below an apple tree okay now the, there's an apple that falls on the person what does the person do he eats it he says oh wow that's a tasty apple okay now we have newton i'm sure, i'm pretty sure you many of you would have heard the story right so there's newton and there's an apple falling on him what does it do he ask he asks a question why do things fall down and then he tries to understand why things fall down and all of this led him to understand gravity in a very clear way so it is these kind of questions simple things simple things like an apple falling newton wanted to ask about it simple things that happen in life why does it happen these are not questions that come very often things uh, very, very very simple concepts like why does the air move why do we breathe these are not questions that come very often because they have all become very natural to us it's it's become very trivial but it is when we ask questions on these trivial things that makes people great so people like newton they seek genuinely so when they seek genuinely in that process they gain a very deep understanding of this world they when when newton discovered the laws of gravity it's called the universal law of gravity which means it's applicable to any part in this universe wherever you go the law of the law of gravity is applicable so it's so basic it's so essential to this universe it's it's so essential it, it's so basic that it's applicable everywhere in this universe so when you try to pursue these questions actively when you try to seek when you try to understand how things happen in a very genuine way, in a very genuine way we gain a very broad perspective of what happens in this universe okay so this is what makes people great scientists people great scientists like einstein newton ramanujam very great this is what sets them apart i just want to uh, bring i just want to uh, tell another uh, story here uh, so i've named it a prince's tale so there's a prince okay so the prince he has all the luxuries in life he he has a big kingdom that his father has built for him and he is very he is living a very luxurious life in a castle he has all he has all the food in the world he has all sorts of enjoyment for him okay now this prince one day he walks out of his uh, big castle and he sees four things so he sees a sick man here okay this is a sick man he sees an old person okay he sees a dead body and he sees a monk and he asks these and once he sees them he asks these questions so we see a sick person every day we see an old person we see a dead person we see all these people every day we know that monks exist so we are fine with these we are fine with all these people existing okay but this prince is different he asks why do people fall sick why do people become old why is there death in this world and why is there a saint who has renounced everything so he asks these questions he wants to know about it rather than just simply accepting it he wants to know more about it what and what does the prince become he becomes the great buddha he becomes enlightened okay so he becomes enlightened he he has he has he he has gone to a state of very deep peace deep satisfaction so buddha he sees all the suffering 
and instead of simply accepting it he asks what is the meaning of this life he asks why does a person fall sick why does a person become old why does a why does a person die and once he asks all these questions he becomes a very transformed man when he get when when it, that he get he becomes a transformed man because he has asked all these questions so trivial questions like these have very profound meanings with them which we fail to ask often so science science is about asking these kind of profound questions and getting profound answers so now this is what science is so now is there a step by step process is is, is it is 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 there a method to what science is definitely there is and uh, we're going to start with the first step which is what i call uh, what we call hypothesis so hypothesis is uh, when a person assumes things so he is doesn't he doesn't know about it he's got some new information like let's say the the kid for example the kid so he has learned about so he he has got some information about newton's third law this is hypothesis for him it's new information that's gone into him he doesn't know anything about it uh, earlier so this is some new information that he has got so for him that's a hypothesis so he is saying okay let us assume that newton's third law is there that there is something called as newton's third law okay so hypothesis is new information that is gained now this is new information it could be from an already established source like newton's third law so we all accept that there is something called as newton's third law but for the kid it is new so for the kid it's an entirely new concept so for him it is a hypothesis okay or for scientists for uh, people who are at the peak of uh, their career in some field for them it could be a well educated guess so when like for example when einstein makes a claim or uh, uh, or when one of the or, or, or let's say newton makes a claim uh, when ramanujan makes a claim they 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 are hypothesizing they are making new claims okay so the first step in the approach to science is hypothesis so you say okay this so this kid is thinking he's saying okay let us assume something okay so for as an example over here uh, what i have given is newton's third law so uh, there's new information that is going into the kid which is he has learnt about newton's third law that there is that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction so that's the hypothesis part so now what does the kid do with this hypothesis he wants to know if it is right or not so what is then so what is the way to do it you experiment on it so there is experimentation so from hypothesis there is an experiment so the kid says okay now i have a hypothesis let's test it so what does he do like in my previous example he takes a balloon and he leaves the balloon away so the balloon is going up air is being pushed down so for for air that is being pushed down the balloon is going up so every action has an equal and opposite reaction now often times uh, it is not just one experiment that convinces you okay so what is the next step so after the experiment you see uh, so it's so after the experiment the kid he asks if he is satisfied if he is satisfied no okay he, if he is not satisfied go ahead do more experiments so what is the next experiment he does he takes a gun and he shoots a bullet so when the bullet travels forward uh, the kid when he shoots the bullet he experiences what is called as recoil so the bullet go so the gun goes back when you fire the bullet so as you fire the bullet the gun goes back and you see over here again the action is the bullet being fired forward and the reaction is the gun uh, going back so for uh, every action uh for for the action of the bullet going forward the gun is going back so he's convinced i mean uh, so he has done another experiment and he's found the same result so now uh, there may be cases where you're stuck in this endless loop so where you do an experiment you're not satisfied you do some more experiments you're still not satisfied and you keep doing this whole procedure again and again and again and he is not satisfied 
but he doesn't want to, so, so, so he, so he gets stuck in this endless loop. So what is the next step? Does he quit over here? No, if he's a true experimentalist, if he's a true uh, seeker, if he's a true scientist, he changes his hypothesis. Says, okay, I've done so many experiments. I'm trying to verify this hypothesis. All these experiments are showing or telling me something else. So, okay, fine. I'll change my hypothesis and test it again. So now it's another loop where you change your hypothesis. You say, okay, it, it's not like this, something like this. You change your experiment, you test your experiments and you see if the hypothesis agrees with your experiment. So now you, you, you keep going along this loop and if you're satisfied, yes, okay. Now you say, I have understood it. So the hypothesis in our examples is Newton's third law. Then you keep doing experiments and you keep doing experiments till you are satisfied. So once you're satisfied, you say, okay, now I have understood it. So this is the procedure for any scientific uh, discovery. It's the procedure for any scientific understanding, be it physics, be it chemistry, be it mathematics, be it biology, be it any field, economics. The entire process of scientific understanding is through hypothesis, through an experiment, and finally you have a satisfaction, which is that you have understood the concept. So this is the backbone of a scientific discovery. Okay, so now that we know how science works and now we know what is the scientific principle, uh, we'll ask, so what is, so is there science, is there some commonality between science and spirituality? Okay, so I just want to start with this fun uh, illustration. So. Uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of this degree called PhD. So this PhD has, uh, it's actually uh, an abbreviation. Uh, it's actually an abbreviation, okay? So PhD actually stands for doctor in philosophy. So when you do science, you're actually a doctor in philosophy. <laughs> so scientists are actually philosophers because simply because the nature of science and the nature of spirituality, both the fields ask you to inquire. It asks you to question, it asks you to seek. Both science and spirituality makes the person seek, which is why science and spirituality both go hand in hand. They all, both, both of their nature is to inquire. Okay, so now that I've given you uh, how the scientific principle works, let's see if the scientific principle holds in spirituality as well. Okay, so what does science say? So science inquires about the nature of things uh, around you, okay? So you ask questions like, uh, why is some, so, it asks about the things around you. So you can see a tree, you can see a bench, you can see the laptop that I'm having in front of me. You can see many things around you. You can feel many things, you can touch many things. So all these things, so you inquire about the nature of these things around you. So why is there a tree? Things like that. So why is it? Why, why is it there? How is it there? What is it? So this is what science does inquires about things around you. What does spirituality do? So spirituality inquires about the nature of things in you, within you. So what it asks is, why me? How does it happen in me? What is me? So to give you some more examples, so in science, you ask about things that you feel, things that you see, things that are there around you. You ask, why does a tree exist? How is the tree living? What is the tree made of? And in spirituality, you ask questions like, why do I exist? How am I living? 
and what am I? So this is the difference in science and spirituality. So science is asking about things around you. Spirituality is asking about things within you. That's it. But the nature of how you inquire about things and how you inquire ab about things in spirituality and in science, it's the same. All science is asking is things around you and all spirituality is asking about what is things within you. How? So science asks, why is there a tree? How is it living and what is it made of? Whereas spirituality says, ask, why do I exist? How am I living? And what am I? Okay. So there is spiritual hypothesis. So what is spiritual hypothesis? So like we have great scientists like Einstein, uh, uh, Newton. We have great sci we have great scientists in uh, spirituality as well. We call them sages. So we have uh, Vivekananda. We have Ramakrishna Paramamsa. We have Ramana Maharshi. So like so when Einstein uh, postulated things, when uh, Newton postulated things, even these sages have also postulated things. So what are these postulates? What are some of the postulates? What have they said? What is their hypothesis? So Swami Vivekananda says, work incessantly, but be not attached to it. So you keep working, but don't get attached to the fruits of the work. Ramakrishna says, offer everything to the Divine Mother Kali. What you do, you sleep, you eat, you do any routine things, you do any trivial thing, offer it to Mother Kali. Just think of it as Kali is doing for it. Kali is doing it for me, not I. I offer everything to Mother Kali. Okay. What does Ramana Maharshi says? He just simply sit silently. Silence is his teaching. Okay. So now we have these great masters with their great teachings. So that's the hypothesis. So now it's up to us to experiment this. We need to experiment these hypotheses. So what do we do? Okay, we work. We work incessantly. So we keep working, we, we donate things, we give food away, we give uh, charity. We keep working, whatever work we have, we keep working, but not expecting anything. So the person out here is smiling, he's just giving away. He's not expecting anything in return. He's just giving away. Okay. And then we have this person over here who's praying to Kali. He's just praying to Kali. Okay. He is not doing anything. He just wants to serve. He just wants to give away everything to this mother Kali. Whatever happens, be it sleeping, be it was doing simple routine activities like eating, he's offering everything to, Lord, uh, to mother Kali. Okay. And then there's this person who's simply sitting silently. He's just sitting silently like Ramana Maharshi. So these are the spiritual experiments that this person does. So you keep in, so you, 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 you be in that loop where uh, there's a hypothesis, you test it with experiments. You keep testing it with experiments and then you keep so if one uh, if one hypothesis doesn't work you go to another hypothesis if it doesn't suit with your experiment so you keep experimenting experimenting until the result which is you are satisfied so so spirituality as you can see over here also has the same step by step procedure that science has at the heart of science and at the heart of spirituality, the process is the same, which is you seek. There are great, there, there are hypotheses, there are postulates. You seek, you do experiments on these hypotheses. You see if it works for you or not. And then, and then you keep seeking until there is satisfaction for you. You keep experimenting, you keep hypothesizing until you are satisfied. So this is the same procedure which is there in science and this is the same procedure that is there in spirituality as well. Okay. So uh, I will uh, give uh, a brief uh, takeaway. So the nature of both science and spirituality is to inquire. So at the root of science and spirituality the process is the same. It's always to inquire. It's always to seek. 
So science seeks to know about the nature of things around you. Spirituality seeks to know about the nature of things within you. Okay. So I just want to leave with this one statement. So always be curious. You just want to keep hypothesis. You just want to keep asking, why does something work? Why does this work? How does it work? So be curious, okay? Then be passionate. Once you're curious, you want to be passionate about it. You want to keep experimenting about it. You want to know why things work. So you want to keep experimenting. You, you just want, you, you don't want to have an idea and leave it and just leave it. You want to be passionate about it. You want to keep inquiring about it. So you want, you have to do, you have to keep doing experiments. So once you're curious, you be passionate about it. Keep doing experiments and then be honest, which is the satisfaction that you have. You keep doing experiments, you keep, uh, you keep, you keep hypothesizing, you keep doing experiments until you're satisfied, until you're true to what you think is right. So be curious, be passionate, and be honest. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Rano, you need to uh, make uh, me again the host. Sorry. Ah, okay. I'll stop uh, the share. Uh, Pranav, it was a wonderful talk. Thank you. It is so complex things, so simple. <laughs> so, right? We were yeah. wondering science and spirituality are uh, fighting with each other. <laughs> looking at the world around us and asking questions. Spirituality is asking for, looking for world within us and asking questions. Now, the other two worlds are within and outside. That's my question to you. <laughs> so, you made it yeah. simple, right? And yeah. the people, we, we can understand. It is the, the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful explanation. Okay. So, science looks at the things outside us mm -hmm. and try to ask questions. Okay. And spirituality tries to see things inside us and ask questions. Yes. I'm asking, I'm wondering, are there two worlds? Outside world and inside world, there are two worlds. It depends on the perspective. So if you think that there is a different outside world and there's a different inside world, there is some, there's a difference. So science is there and spirituality is here. But if okay. there is no outside world here and there's no, there's no outside and inside world, then science and spirituality is the same. Uh, then science and spirituality become one. Yes, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> oh, well, one day science and spirituality will become one. We will we'll not study Lately, and one day we'll study in the, we'll do a PhD in, uh, in your university for science and spirituality combined. Uh, maybe there will exist, Guruji. I'll become the teacher. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Pranav. Very wonderful speech. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, question is, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir. So I also want to uh, ask, there is a method of acceptance of uh, what you have found in science. Yeah. Uh, is it something similar to the acceptance that is there in spirituality or this different? I think it's the same. The acceptance part is what makes like, uh, so uh, if you think there is an outside world and inside world, it is this acceptance which brings both the worlds together. Because this acceptance is subjective. What, the hypothesis and experiments is what is objective in science. But acceptance is subjective. It's what I, it's what happens to me, right? So okay. what happens to me, it finally becomes subjective. What happens to me? So I should get convinced, not anyone else. There is a scientific community so you're trying to please a scientific community, but ultimately, so for example, the scientific community broadly believes, most of the scientific community believes that the earth is round, okay? 
but there are these people who go on saying the earth is flat they don't believe in what science says they don't believe that what that the earth is uh, they don't believe that the earth is round so they have come to an acceptance that the earth is flat so for them the earth is flat until they do further experiments and they do further hypothesis and they say that the earth is not flat they they uh, that they do they do some sort of experiments for them the earth is still flat right so the acceptance part comes because it is that big because it's happening to me i believe the hypothesis and i believe the experiments that has been done is right right and like like in uh, spirituality in even in science you have some uh, accepted standards which everyone takes it as uh, uh, given and in some spirit, spiritual cases some things are accepted yes so uh, so th- so there are i mean so for every uh, so a, a person who uh, goes in the spiritual line is called as a sadhaka so the sadhaka has several milestones right he also has some milestones that when 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 he starts off he has certain milestones just like how you start off in science there are some certain milestones that he has so similarly for a sadhak as well there are certain milestones that he has okay thank you yeah prabhu yeah pa uh, uh, yeah pranam the spirituality we are speaking of oneness with the universe oneness with god and we are always constantly focusing on oneness mm-hmm. science is also focusing on the unified field theory and oneness mm-hmm. are they are they parallel are they one and the same are they different okay so what we are looking for, so in this unified theory uh, what we are looking for is essentially one uh, mathematical equation uh that can describe everything so that is what this unified theory is looking for uh it's essentially looking for something which can explain everything so you start off by uh seeking what this oneness is so you start off by asking questions what this oneness is and even in the spiritual and even in the spiritual line uh you are focusing on something which is one now where it leads is a different question so in science you are looking for that oneness outside how how this uni- how can i as- explain the universe with just one equation that is what science is looking for spirituality is looking for where this oneness exists in me so science is looking outside spirituality is looking inside both of them are looking for oneness though once <laughs> outside and one side inside is very bit confusing for me okay when you say outside inside inside of what is confusing <laughs> <laughs> the okay, entire so, spiritual journey uh uh-huh. make everything subjective as objective okay the spiritual spiritual journey is neti 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 not this not this not this anything got a subject you try to make it objective right then you will li- reach a pure subject that means then you so science you right yeah then you make everything objective then only pure pure consciousness remains yes so, so science said what is outside is a bit confusing right so science also so science also enquires into the nature of things so when when we say neti 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 it means you are saying okay it is not this table it is not this laptop it is not this chair so what science is doing is it's looking into the re, uh, uh, into the objective reality of what this table is it is looking into the reality of what this laptop is so now you want to try to explain what this laptop is you try to you want to try to explain what this table is but thing is no matter what we physicists do we can never understand this because in order to understand a table in physics language we'll have to explore this table in all, in the entire energy scale which goes from zero to infinity so any object that we see 
is actually a well defined collection of facts so now in order to describe anything we need infinite facts in that way we can't describe anything at all so this is where science will lead this is the final this is this is the, science can take you till here you can say that i know nothing after doing all this phd after doing uh, law like 20 30 years of research a scientist comes and says okay i don't know anything ha uh, then you'll get a nobel prize <laughs> yes <laughs> that is an even a nobel prize <laughs> then if if a spiritual person says i know nothing you'll get enlightenment both are the same he'll get enlightened when you say i know nothing when scientists say i know nothing you'll get a nobel prize <laughs> Wonderful, uh, Pranav. Anybody on the Zoom no, no. want to have a question? Pranav, no, no, one. Uh, Pranav. Yeah. I have. Uh, I have one thought. Okay. As you were speaking, uh -huh. uh, I believe that uh -huh. ignorance is a common uh, commonality between science and spirituality. Okay. Right. So, uh, when we said oneness, I believe once the ignorance part is taken out. or it is being filled up i think then science and spirituality uh, mixes at one point or reaches at the same point is it is it the hypothesis right well we'll have to experiment it <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me what ignorance is because what i feel is that uh, as you were uh, talking about most of us uh, may not be knowing lot of things Uh, that is going around when we say within ourselves we don't know a lot of things within ourselves uh -huh. we don't know a lot of things within outside also right so basically yeah. no as a as a common man we are not able to reach to a conclusion uh, about anything that goes around us and uh -huh. basic thing is ignorance so if we find out you know uh, able to uh, get a you know uh, more knowledgeable or get more understanding about things i think science and spirituality reaches a single point yes i i think i think in science and spirituality the ignorance is i know something in whether it is in science i'll say i know this table because i can see it there is some color coming from it it's rigid i'll say it's made of wood and i know it is a table in spirituality also you have like i said you have these milestones so i have achieved this step okay so i know it so the ignorance is i for me according to me the ignorance is i know something both science and spirituality will lead finally to the statement i know nothing because when you try to keep enquiring for example about the nature of the table you can go deeper and deeper you can say okay how what is the table made of you say okay it's atoms okay and then you look deeper into atoms you say okay it's not actually atoms it's a collection of it's just a collection of things and they they behave in some cooperative way now you look into that you you look you look deeper you'll find something more you can keep looking deeper and deeper and deeper there's no end to it it's like falling into a, an endless well so you can keep looking into it you can keep looking into it so the fa so so the realization is that i know nothing in science because you can keep do you 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 just keep falling into that infinite well uh, is this fine thanks hello pranav wala here i heard you are this thing when the scientists know that nothingness is ultimate and everything is ultimate nothingness is an ultimate why all the sponsoring scientists has been so much of uh, bombarded with their own uh, researchers and all uh -huh. bombarded why? with research their uh, you know all these uh, new new inventions they always claim that we are found this something but okay. actually when the scientist doing nothing all the scripture has given them all kind of knowledge i uh -huh. also heard all the scripture has given all the knowledge uh -huh. what what way they are climbing that that they know something 
well if we if we didn't allow science to progress we wouldn't be having this meeting right because of zoom all of us are connected <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so but the nature of science is things so there are things that there are things that happen so there are uh, so there are things that so there are uh, there are all these concepts right i said everything is a concept so but ultimatism but ultimatism nati nothing right mm-hmm. Yeah, but nothing. Sakalam is... kalvidam Brahma. Sakalam but kalvidam not... Brahma, as Guruji says. Okay. Then where are uh, where are the heading? The Because ultimatism. Of... The ultimatism. Okay. I am not asking this, Guruji. <laughs> the uh, ultimatism. Because now yes, what you explained as uh, spirituality and science is uh-huh. wonderful. Is wonderful. Is okay. guided very well. Guided very well. i understood your your view but i am asking in a view of society okay the science 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 we did this we did that we know the parameters of medicine they know the parameters of body they know every organ but finally they say i don't know anything only god god has to save you okay so <laughs> what are you asking but final what is science giving us what is the essence science is giving science is guiding us towards spirituality or science is uh, guiding us to the science uh, science can you repeat the last line is science is guiding us to uh, guruji uh, is science is uh, guiding us towards spirituality or uh-huh. science is guiding us towards to catch hold of the essence of science why do you think both are different no i am not asking i am not telling it is different according so to me, me i am not i am not thinking it is different uh, pranav okay. for me it is one and the same okay i must so, go- so i will take this in the spiritual uh, journey and i will bring and i'll correlate it to science okay yeah yeah okay so how does a sadhaka start he doesn't know anything right so then okay. so then there are some gurus that come for him So okay. Guru says, "Okay, first you pray to this God, and he becomes mm-hmm. a bhakta. Mm-hmm. Then, mm-hmm. Uh, then, then, uh, then there's a then there's a yoga charya who comes and he says, 'Okay, uh, do yeah. meditation. Yeah. And finally, it is a sadguru who who will liberate you, right? Yeah. So there are all these milestones. Yeah. Yeah. So for so it's it's a step by step process. Yeah. So science is also like that." So you yeah. start. So you start yeah. by asking. Yeah. You you start by asking all these questions step by step. And what yeah. are and, and when you continue the spiritual when you go along the spiritual journey you have byproducts right you develop intense yeah. bhakti you have so much emotion within you. Yeah. You have yeah. you 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 meditate you have so much concentration power within you. Yeah. All of these are there. Hmm. similarly when you go along the path of science you get all these by products you have laptops you have mm-hmm. uh, you have all these things these are all by products these are all there and actually when, recently and when, recently i have heard uh, nasa has a step by step of our uh, you know uh, science of uh, science explanation of our chart of amavasya and purnami okay nasa has this is what uh, i have heard and i also have heard there is a mantra of anusthavara in which atomic power has been developed okay. so our ancient rishis and vedas had everything in them as a combination okay. right so this is what if the inquisitiveness to know the ness to know something uh-huh. when they are when the scientists are going towards decoding something uh-huh. already man know something he is superior he know something is the scientist also not heading towards that and trying to do decode something always yeah, i mean everyone is trying to decode something right everyone is trying to know things that's what i said so yeah that's what i felt uh, that ultimate is according, uh, according to guruji it is ultimate is nothing that's the thing i just wanted to ask so scientists yeah, so, yeah can i just answer this question yes, yes yes there are two dimensions to our life the what we see a perceived dimension and a absolute reality what i see and what it is the science is exploring what i see and spirituality is trying to find out what it is both are both will meet in oneness what is that what is 
so the objective the, the role of science the more scientists discover okay they'll bring comfort to human life they'll bring make our life simpler our life uh, more communication it like i can say in the language science brings the comfort of air conditioning and airplane to our life whereas spirituality brings the air conditioning our mind and mind becomes peaceful so both are required in that sense the outer reality and inner reality if the, if, if if the whole whole life is becoming uncomfortable then you can't make a spiritual journey so a comfort which is required for life comfort required for communication comfort which is required for travel that's what science brings to us now in the absolute truth point of view there's only one of the absolute truth which is actually both science and spirituality will finally converge so role of science i see as neti 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 so brahma satyam jagan mithyam this is the statement so jagan mithya is being proven by science day in and day out the world is unreal whatever you see initially you start with the molecules then you start the atoms energy then you say come to nothing is jagan mithya is being proved by science in a day in and day out brahma satya is what you have discovered that way science and spirituality are complementary to each other not fighting with each other <laughs> okay guruji thank you guruji <laughs> thank you guruji thank you hari om guruji thank you pranav thank you hari om uh, hari om pranav this is venkat i thought you know very nice uh, uh, presentation very informative i will be referring it in the future uh, what i believe uh, what i see is uh, the science within the current framework trying to solve the you know the you know postulates of uh, larger domain of spirituality for example i recently was in a discussion you know in the boundary or within the science boundary of sciences what is what is known they try to solve the principle of karma okay right the karma principle you try to solve within the boundary of what is available as the science postulates mm-hmm. it has gone into a complete failure actually the discussion went everywhere and nobody has answered so you know for example if you apply the same you know action and reaction are equal and opposite it works on the material if i scold you in the domain of spirituality everybody reacts differently you know somebody scold you back or you know you can't say that the with newton's third law worked on your body right or you scolding somebody so mm-hmm. there has to be a bridge to analyze for example karma principle we need to create a bridge that analyzes in the totality i believe do you have any uh, sort of thoughts on this how do we create this bridge that analyzes the you know the the principle given to us by our own sanatana dharma that wisdom has been converted into a lot of postulates like this yeah uh, so what i uh, believe is uh, rather than uh, trying to find out uh, what these karma principles are is there rebirth in life yeah i mean some people may say they exist some people say that it doesn't some people say love karma is there some people say it, it's not there so it's like so it's like so there is some truth to this universe now if a person hits up on that truth fair enough it's not it will just be an endless discussion so rather than focusing on does this kind of love karma exist or does uh, is, is there rebirth in this universe i say why don't we just look upon the reality of things and ask what is the nature of anything uh is this fine yeah i, I think somewhere so it's like so it's like so it's like uh, it's like uh, uh, it's like trying to understand okay i don't uh, i'll try to say some signs I, i if you are not uh, following me uh, please stop okay so uh, so we are trying to understand what gravity is we are, we are trying to understand uh, uh, yeah we are trying to understand what gravity is so now einstein uh, so now newton first came up and said uh, okay so gravity is a force okay so he says when uh, there are two objects two mass it, it has mass so if if they have mass they get attracted okay and they get attracted because of gravity now einstein comes and says it's not just that it's not just a force what happens is gravity is a product of the geometry of the space so 
it's not of it, the force is not coming because of the objects it's coming just because of how the space and time is bent around just the curvature of the space and time okay so it doesn't mean that newton's postulates are not newton's postulates are not correct uh, they do apply in some sense but einstein's postulates are more general we say it's more fundamental in in the sense that it's more widely applicable doesn't mean newton's concepts are wrong it's just that we have found out something more fundamental so now people are trying to understand law of karma people are trying to understand rebirth now there is some field in which you try to work with these principles right so science tries to work with these principles you define this so for let's say for defining rebirth how do, how are you going to know that the next uh, birth is yours there there must be some common principle established between this birth and the next birth you say okay it's some mem- it's some form of memory now you'll have to define those things now these variables which are defining in science and which are defining in spirituality are totally two different things science is not science is not accepting the vari- variables that spirituality is talking about spirituality is, spirituality is not accepting the variables science is talking about so then what is the point of discussion right <laughs> they are not agreeing on the variables itself so how will you discuss how will you talk about some common thing when spiritual when spirituality people talk about consciousness and when science people talk about consciousness it's two different things the variables when you say consciousness but what is this consciousness so science people define it in some way it's they say it's neurons firing in the brain and things like that spiritual people say no no it's not a, it's not objective at all so when the variables itself are different how, what will you argue on so i say instead of arguing on whether rebirth exists or whether love if if it is there it will come up some it, it, it will be there but right now we don't even have the tools we don't even we don't even have the right variables to define these it's a very debated subject so rather than going into a very debated subject and having a very futile discussion instead we why don't we try to analyze the reality of the object that we see in front of us let's take an apple instead so we all see an apple right it has so much different color so it has red it has some white yellow stripes and things like that is the app so then you and then you talk about the nature of the apple you say why is this apple red and then you you start inquiring more and more and more about this apple so then science, some scientists will come and say okay it's because there is something called as electromagnetic spectrum uh, there is uh, light coming out and uh, you say uh, it's because the apple reflects this kind of light and absorbs everything so now you say what is this light so you keep inquiring this and this and what i am saying is as a physicist you keep inquiring about things and you realize that you are falling into a deeper and deeper well uh pranav you know what yeah. happened what in this example you described already you already right. bridged, bridged it you already created a framework okay it's an so in our ancient principles it's an appearance uh-huh. it's okay. a mythya right the mythya it's uh-huh. an appearance the apple right. what you see is an uh-huh. appearance yes. that is a portrait given to us uh-huh. by, by our own you know uh, ancients yes uh-huh. so we demystified it just now in the way you explained it <laughs> okay. right so uh-huh. like that like that you know especially we need to take each of those postulates okay and create a framework okay that demystifies the understanding for example this karma principle the closest match i found was uh, the past life regression forget the past life even current life itself the impressions play out mm-hmm. how that plays out if you solve it for the current life that people understand then eventually you go to the past life regression so we need to figure out a mechanism or uh, that bridges this hope uh, hope i'm making sense yeah okay we need to figure out a mechanism that bridges this within the framework what people understand you know because everybody is conditioned with science from the day they study from the first standard onwards right mm-hmm. they'll continue like this then we cannot change the mass but at least drag them in the path that they know correct mm-hmm. and create a bridge i believe we need to keep creating this bridges hence it can make people understand the larger principles yes. 
Arish my case. Thank you. I just want to comment on this. Right now, the science as such has no motivation to bring spirituality into the fold. They are like almost like they are parallels in that sense. Because the moment you speak of scientist talking subjectivity, he'll be no longer a scientist. Science by, by, science by definition objective. So the moment the scientist speaks of consciousness, people will throw him out of the science community. He'll not get funding. Okay. So that's the problem. It is the responsibility of the spirituality to bring science into one convergence, not the scientists to bring spirituality into their convergence. Because spirituality is a higher domain compared to science. So the spiritual, because the scientists ignore the consciousness, the seer, and they focus on the scene. Whereas the spirituality really focuses on seer and the scene. That way, in the sense, spirituality is a superset and science is a subset. The role of science is to negate things, neti, neti, neti. Many of the models which are developed in science uh, can be applied in spirituality. For example, law of uh, what you call as, uh, uh, what you call as uh, uh, the Newton's law or quantum theory. So many of these things can be related in spiritual teachings. So the relationship has to come from a spirituality point of view, not from the science point of view, because science is al science already defined its role. Subject is not my domain, only object is my domain. But spirituality, by definition, says subject and object my domain. So I'll say spirituality is a superset. It is spiritual. The people who are spiritual will find a model which will suit fit, which will be explaining both. That's my view. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Good. So, questions. Please? questions? Uh, otherwise, we can uh, bring this to a closure. As, as science goes deeper and deeper into neti, 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 aren't they slowly finding out that this subjective domain is actually becoming objective? Uh, can you, sir, can you repeat your question, please? Uh, uh, no, Guruji, uh, as science goes deeper and deeper, in, into mm -hmm. the basic uh, essence of the universe. Yes, yes. Aren't yes, they yes. slowly finding out that uh, this yes. uh, subject, uh, this objective domain is actually leading towards becoming subjective? Uh, it is like, you see, the scientist is focused on the objective, okay? Now the spirituality is focused on the subjective. The principle of spirituality is what is subjective you have to make it objective. That's the process of neti, neti, neti. Anatma, anatma, anatma means object, matter. So science, spirituality is the journey of spirituality is anatma, find anatma and anatma is mitya. So in that way, the, what is rejected as anatma, mitya, it becomes the domain of science. And science comes and proves that it's mitya anyway. Atoms are not atoms, molecules are not molecules, uh, energy is not energy, everything is kade. Finally, they will say, okay, nothing is there. So in that way, uh, science and spirituality will converge. But finally, science will not come to Atma or Brahman. Okay, science will say there is some one reality. So one reality is for us to find out. And it's individually has to find out, individual journey. But to the extent of what is Anatma or is non-self, science will do a very good job. Thank you, Guruji. Okay. So science and spirituality meet in Anatma. In Atma, science and spirituality don't know me. That's my opinion. <laughs> okay, uh, Shraman, we can conclude the session today. Yes, uh, thanks, Guruji, and thanks, Pranav, for a very exciting uh, talk. And in fact, you can see by the interest in the questions, uh, we are uh, very much interested in this very subject. And uh, uh, you have done a very wonderful job uh, by going to the very basic point about the science, which makes it interesting because uh, we want to make this very, very simple so that even a lot of children who are uh, part of our uh, uh, you know, community can understand and appreciate the subject uh, right from young age. So thanks a lot for your wonderful talk uh, for now. And
Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Guruji, for all the questions and. Can I, can I add something? Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Vishnu Ambishan speaking. Yeah, Vishnu Vishnu ji. Yeah. Uh, 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 can I just to say one sentence? Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Science, I feel, uh, during Second World War, the scientists who developed the atom bombs. Hello. Yes, we can hear uh, Vishnu ji. Go ahead. Uh, the scientists who developed the atom bombs and saw the destruction of humanity during the Second World War. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the scientists felt sorry after witnessing this uh, so much of destruction. And uh, he said himself, I should not have done it. Am I correct? Yes. Ah, that attitude is spirituality. When the bomb is made, that is science. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Sorry, that is spirituality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That is the consequence of science. <laughs> <laughs> it has done a lot of things for humanity. But the whole thing can be destroyed in one second, part of a second. <laughs> that, thanks, thanks, so, Ji. Uh, yeah. 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 So, uh, and uh, Shaman Kumar, uh, uh, thank you for creating this wonderful forum, Atma Jyoti Science and Non Duality. Uh, very interesting talk we had from Pranav and he made very complex things to very simple and uh, we look forward to more talk from Pranav, Pranavji and his friends to bring more enlightenment from a science point of spiritual science point of view to spirituality and we'll give some light from spirituality point of view to science also <laughs> we'll exchange the views and uh, this will benefit a lot of people a lot of youngsters are there they will try to come on this platform and they'll gain from this inter exchange of knowledge from uh, science and spirituality I request Pranav to Pranam and Shaman Kumar to this forum bring us more, more, more and more insights into science and spirituality. Thank you, Shaman. Thank you. Padma uh, Vachana. Pranav. <laughs> <laughs> Padma Th Thanks, uh, Guruji. Uh, I just want to add one more. If, if you are interested and in not in the group of Ascend, uh, please do uh, join the Ascend group and put all your questions there. If there are further questions, we would like to uh, take it up or may, may uh, design our future talks based on your questions. So we want your participation in the WhatsApp group. Thanks a lot for this uh, interest shown in this group. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Prabhuji, and Namaste. thanks, Pranam. Yeah, I want more kids. I, I mean, I want more uh, people who are who are like who are in school and who are in colleges to bring more and more ideas to this group because they are actually going through this education of science. Uh, they are actually going through this process of learning. So if I if we have more inputs from them, it would be very wonderful. Yes, uh, actually, we have a lot of uh, youngsters uh, in our group. Okay. Have a one day session with the ask a scientist question, ask a scientist, ask a, ask a scientist question answer session also. <laughs> right? They will be very yeah. happy to bug you. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. There are a lot of interesting things we can do. We have a lot of youngsters also. They will be mm -hmm. interested in these things. Right. Uh, I would like to request you to, to continue this dialogue, uh -huh. something more. So we develop into a greater uh, uh, something uh, valuable to the humanity. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I am 80 years young. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, we'll close for the day. Okay. Are you for to your next lecture, uh, Pranav? Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you? Are you?